Welcome to another video interview uh, brought to you by ASCHE's online community, Connected, where chemical engineers mix it up. My name is Phil Westwell. I'm 2013 president of ASCHE, and with me is uh, Amir Farid. Amir is uh, vice president for Manufacturing Americas for Shell, has responsibilities for Canada, uh, West Coast, Argentina, uh, and a host of responsibilities through Shell worldwide. He's held many positions of responsibility within his career at Shell and in the community. And he's just finished speaking on a, uh, the keynote lecture for the spring meeting, Delivering Innovation Solutions for an Energy Future. So, Amir, can you start by just briefly summarizing for the connected audience what were the key points of your talk today? Yeah, I think, I think the key messages today were, were A, just the opportunities in the energy mm -hmm. field today, especially in North America with the technology that's come to play with fracking, the huge opportunities in petrochemical and refining industry in terms of new energy supplies, at the same time that there's a glo growing global energy demand, but contrasted by the increasing societal expectation on us doing our work safely with minimal impact on the environment, and how do we meet those challenges going forward, and in particular this morning, uh, mm -hmm. Focusing some of the process safety challenges that we face. You know, manufacturing, your your area is a topic that cuts across much of the chemical engineering profession, extend to being out of the manufacturing facility, jobs like sales, design, uh, even to the professors who educate future leaders in manufacturing, and they have responsibilities for that. Even their research is about creating products and processes that can be in manufacturing. So it's a a core value. Can you give your thoughts on this broad view of the manufacturing enterprise? Yeah, so we've chatted a bit about the various areas that Shell mm -hmm. engages in, in terms of supplying energy for the future, and it covers all of the areas you mentioned from R&D, you know, again, investing in that every year, developing mm -hmm. new technologies, putting mm -hmm. those projects in place from the standpoint of implementing new large-scale projects around mm -hmm. the world, uh, bringing those to market mm -hmm. through distribution and yeah. permitting facilities, and then through figuring out who we can sell them to and how can we tailor our products to the customers and doing all that in a, in a, in a clean way, in an environmentally effective way. So to me, manufacturing is literally from out of the ground mm -hmm. to, to, the, to, the, to the inside your, your car or your diesel engine. Uh, and it covers all of those things. And, and it's exciting because there's so many opportunities for chemical engineers to get involved along that wide, wide chain. And yet, the public tends not to think of this as manufacturing. Well, they, no, they tend not to think of it when they think of manufacturing. Yeah, again, it's, 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 the, it's the assembly line approach. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, even in some, I remember there was a, there was a comedy on TV a few, a few years ago, Grace Under Fire. Right. And this individual was supposedly a process operator someplace. Mm -hmm. And I recall she was in a room, there were some dials, uh, old dials on, on, on the wall and a light bulb. And, and I, even when they get to it, you know, that's their view. Right. And it's, it's so much more sophisticated. There's so much more involved. Uh, it's really an exciting industry. But is your experience then when people are saying, well, you, you have to manufacture fuels in pharmaceuticals and polymers, do they change their initial reaction? You know, my experience, Phil, has been seeing as believing. Mm -hmm. where, where we, what we have tried to do, especially when we deal with uh, regulators and mm -hmm. governmental uh, members of government, we like to take them to our sites mm -hmm. and actually show them what we do and take them in our control and they go, this is manufacturing. Then they then they sort of see the difference in terms of what really we're talking about. And they typically walk out of it very impressed mm -hmm. with how we approach our business. And it, it really does change their perception. They say, oh, that's manufacturing too. Yes, absolutely. That's right. no question. And yet manufacturing is expanding yes. now too. We see traditional lines of business with very non-traditional ways of doing it. Uh, the notion that it's not new gas and oil, it's unconventional gas and oil, that it's new ways of, of dealing with it. And then new sensor technologies are changing how we monitor facilities. Analytics is changing how we look at the mass of data that come in. And then you see these other new dimensions of uh, using cyber infrastructure to look at the supply chain right. rather than running a big linear programming yeah. model once a week. It's almost uh, real-time real time. sort of activities. The, the federal government is having a lot of conversation about the U.S. manufacturing renaissance. So 
many of these new developments are right down the line of chemical engineers. How do we stay at the forefront of that and at the forefront of the conversation about manufacturing in the U.S.? Yeah, so, so, so I think helping to educate not just the, the external entities such as governments and regulators, but also educating our community itself, <laughs> right? And helping our chemical engineers, both in the profession and the ones who are going to become joining our profession mm -hmm. in the head, helping them see the breadth of these activities. Because mm -hmm. I think at this point, it's difficult to see the wide spectrum of, of how these new technologies and the growing demands and the changing demands mm -hmm. all come together in a way that, that if we do this right, will create great opportunities, but also opportunities for us to do really good for, for, for the community that we work in. And, and I think we all have an opportunity, maybe especially for folks like you and I, who mm -hmm. have the ability to see that entire spectrum, mm -hmm. to be able to communicate this much more effectively with folks. Because once they see it, we have bright, talented people in the profession, mm -hmm. they'll get it once they understand the opportunities that are there. That's, that's really terrific. Uh, these thoughts have been terrific. We appreciate your keynote lecture. Again, thank, thank you, you very much. much. It's great to be here.